Hi, Dave Caudle here with another top tip for your career. Today I'm talking about who's calling the shots in your career. Now obviously we'd all like to think we're in charge of our own career, but actually you know, when you stop and think about it, a lot of the time we just let things slide along and we go with the flow and we maybe take opportunities when they come up. And particularly at times when you're feeling worried about your career, maybe feeling a bit stuck in your career, yeah, that's a good time to stop and think, well, am I really in control of my career? Because if I am, why am I feeling stuck? What can I do to get unstuck? And I think that's the thing. If you're feeling stuck, that's the choice you're making if you stay stuck. So you need to think about what can I do about it? And it's not necessarily about changing your job. It might be about changing the way that you look at things or the way that you do things. My purpose in this video is just to start to give you some hints and some tips and some strategies to actually start to take control and call your shots in your career. Because after all, it's your career. You should be driving the bus on this one, not letting someone else do it. So, um, yeah, have a, th have a think and, and have a, a vision. First of all, have a vision. You know, what do you want your working life to look like? And that might just be as simple as a feeling, I want to be happy, I want something I'm passionate about. And then just starting to think, well, am I passionate about what I'm doing at the moment? And if not, what can I do to either get more passionate about it or find something that I am more passionate about? Um, you know, I think there's some practical things as well. So, for example, um, if you're working from home, calling the shots in your career is about setting the boundaries. So it's about making sure that your colleagues and your boss know, you know when you're available to work and when you're not available to work. And making sure that you take the choice to set those boundaries. And it's very easy, I think, when we're working from home to be in a mode of, oh, well, I'll just pop on and check my emails. I've got half an hour. Rather than saying, you know what, it's the evening. I'm not at work. It can wait till tomorrow. So you get proper time to relax, to do the things that you love to do. Spend time with the people that you love to spend time with. And they probably love spending time with you, let's be honest. So give them that pleasure. And it helps you, you'll perform better. And you'll feel happier if you've had proper breaks in between. So it's, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, it gets to five o'clock, you've got to turn the computer off. But think about how you want to blend your day. And talk to your boss and your colleagues about you know, how you can do that to suit you. So it may be that. Actually, you can arrange a working day where you say maybe do a few hours in the morning, spend some time with your family, your kids, whatever, in the in the afternoon and early evening, and then do some work later on in the evening. Um, but it's about working out the right blend for you and for you to be proactive in going and setting those boundaries. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, if you're at you know when you're in the office or at your place of work. Make sure that you set your boundaries as well. So that's about thinking around you know, what breaks are you going to have? Are you going to work through your lunch? I mean, really? Why not take a lunch break? It's good for you. Right, it's good. You know, mental health is the big buzz thing. Um, has been for a long time. Will be more in the future, I think. And actually, it's good for your health, mentally and physically, to take a break at lunchtime. Get out of the office. At least get away from your desk and switch off and do something different. And try and do it, you know, my suggestion is try and get an hour, but if you can only grab half an hour, grab half an hour. And don't use the excuse that it's the company culture that people always work through and it's, you know, it's seen as almost a macho thing to, um, you know, to work through your lunch break. It's a sign of how good you are. Well, no, it's not really. It's a sign that you're not organizing yourself properly and you're not setting your boundaries. Um, so, You'd be bold enough to say, look, right, it's 12.30, I'm taking an hour for lunch, I'll see you at 1.30. You know, have those conversations with people, make those statements. Um, and schedule time, this is the big, 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 big one. Schedule time to work on your career every week. When I say on your career, that's not doing your job, that's working on you and your career, developing your vision for what you want your career to be like, what you want your life to be like as well, because remember, your career is the thing that usually is supplying the money to support the rest of your life. So make sure that you're thinking about the whole vision, you know, and it doesn't have to be in, in super detail. 
but at least have an idea of what you want your life to look like. Maybe in six months' time, some people work better in those shorter periods. Other people prefer to set that 10, 20 year sort of vision of the type of house they want to live in, the people they want to be mixing with. You know, do what works for you, but do have that vision. The other thing about working on your career is it's not just the, the sort of visioning. There's some practical stuff to do there as well. Check in with your values regularly. What are your work values? What does work need to do for you? And is it doing those things? And if it isn't, do something about it. The other sort of side of that in terms of you know what we offer and what we want, that's the what we want. Think about what you offer and remember to you know, keep your portfolio of, of who stories, those are those stories of what do you do, how do you do it, and what are the outcomes, because they'll be useful in recognising how your skill set is building up, identifying things that you start to want to leave behind, starting to identify things you want to develop further because you've had a little taster of them, and really, really useful when you get to performance appraisal in articulating quite clearly the benefits you've brought to the company. So there's a lot of practical things that you can do to take charge of your career and you can be the one that calls the shots. So have some fun. Use today as the day that you started taking control of your career.